going on, y'all? I'm back for a new video. It's been a while since I last uploaded, but uh, I got a part in the mail from Jin's Choppers. It is a luggage rack for my Jin's Choppers Sissy Bar. I ordered it way back in June, so it's been about four months of waiting, uh, but she's in now, so I want to do a quick install, show you guys how she looks, and I also have some footage after the install uh, of some other parts that I've upgraded on the bike since uh, you last saw me, which includes a headlight, some signal lights, but I'll just, just watch the video. Let's do it. So this is my luggage rack. It's gonna sit right here. And all I need is the orange. Um, so I want to go ahead and see if it's possible for me to have both the luggage rack and the back pad at the same time. I don't think that's the case. Now I got the shorty, which is only like a 10 inch sissy bar. If you got anything taller, I would imagine you'd be able to make it work. So although the bracket for the backrest does situate, doesn't interfere, the backrest itself is too far away. Uh, it bumps into the bracket of the luggage rack. So no go. So there it is. There is the luggage rack that is now attached to my sissy bar. I ordered this thing back in June. It took over four months to get here. Their build quality is awesome. They are custom made to order. You get what you pay for. I do recommend them if you have uh, a Jin's sissy bar. And if you don't have a sissy bar from Jin's, go over, check them out. They are a great company. They make great products. So buy with confidence. But now uh, that this is installed, I'll go ahead and roll the footage from my installs prior to this with that include my new headlight, the brackets, and the forward and rear signals that I put on. So check it out. What's going on, y'all? So uh, I took some footage of the installs for the combustion industry signal lights uh, for the front and rear, as well as for the headlight, uh, the new headlight bucket and the brackets that go along with it. But the quality of the footage was a little bit grainy and the audio wasn't too great. So I included some B-roll of the installs themselves, but I'll also just go around and just show you what the finished products look like uh, in real time. So let's check it out. All right, it's a little bit rainy, so I'll try to get through this pretty quickly. The first thing that I wanna talk about is the switch to my grips. I used to have these from Wunderkin Custom. These look great, the contrast between the metal and the rubber but the rubber is so thin and uh, it doesn't go throughout the grip so i found myself getting numb hands when riding on the highways on high speed so i was uh interested in finding a third party rubber grip i've seen several videos online of the vans grips put on scouts and scout bobbers the only sort of modification that needs to be done to grips like these is putting a hole at the end of the grip. It's not an open-ended grip to accommodate for bar end mirrors. So outside of that, the install was pretty simple. You can check out any one of those videos online because there's several. And there's a reason why these feel great. They are thick, they are grippy, and they look good on the bike. It gives it a nice little retro look. So quick and easy. I love these things, but in terms of comfort for distance riding, they're not ideal. So. I'll be putting these away once again. So now let's get to some of the bigger upgrades that I've been talking about. So first things first, I wanted to keep my JW speaker adaptive seven inch headlight. When you're leaning into a turn, the lights then illuminate the part of the road that you're leaning into. I wanted to find a bucket that would accommodate it because my old bucket, which had a matte finish, um, initially was getting some wear on the back of the housing because of the brake line and to be quite honest the bucket that I've, i had was pretty cheap they're not a ton of options for seven inch 
headlight buckets out there that would fit the scout bobber line so um thankfully i ran into uh moto demic and what's cool about those they have several options for five and three quarter lights seven inch headlights and they have different color options and i went for this gloss matte contrast i thought it complemented what i've got going on with the bike so far especially with the indian gloss emblem that i went with to contrast up against the matte finish of the tank as well as the gloss finish of the gas cap and really just the overall aesthetic of the bike i feel like it goes really well it gives it a nice old school look the only thing is that this headlight comes with an adapter ring that you have to install the headlight into before putting into the housing itself and so the headlight itself does not sit flush up against the actual housing itself like it did on my other light and i'll show you what i'm talking about so this is my original bucket not the headlamp itself but the bucket itself and if you notice the light sits flush up against the actual housing ring and there's nothing in between it um which allows me to have my headlight grill um, in the front. So let's go over and take a look. So normally the headlight grill would sit up against the headlight and the ring from the housing itself would hold the grill in place behind the bucket. And that's no longer the case now because of this headlight ring that's, that's now there. So I don't know, I don't mind the look of a naked headlight as it stands anyway. So there it is. What I also ended up doing was I got this uh, fork bracket from Alchemy Parts. It's very similar to the other uh, headlight bracket that I got previously, but there's a couple of key differences on why I switched those out. Uh, because I was no longer going to be in need of a mounting hole for the turn signals, I went with a shorter fork mount that would have the headlight sitting a little bit more flush up against the frame of the bike. And as you can see, there's really not a, any room left in that negative space. I'll just do a quick comparison for you to see. And boom, there you go. So that's about a, mm, maybe about a half inch difference, but it's noticeable when you have the headlight mounted on there. So before I talk about the new turn signals themselves, let me talk about why I wanted to switch out my old ones. So I used to have the Astro turn signals from Joker Machine. They were super low profile. They were very bright. They were well made. Unfortunately, I don't have them anymore after the uninstall. So I can't show you firsthand, but essentially there were three issues. There were issues with the lenses of the leds in fact a couple times the led lens fell off completely and i had to order some replacement leds from joker machine the customer service at joker machine they were really helpful when i gave them a call gave them a call they were able to ship me a couple of uh, extra ones but i had to replace those and uh, that just wasn't fun another issue that i found with the astro turn signals was that the housings themselves would get a little bit discolored. They would start turning a little bit more gold than black. I can only identify the sun as the reason why that's the case, but it started to stand out a little bit, especially on a bright day that it was no longer this gloss black. And lastly, and really the most frustrating issue that I found with the Joker Machine Astros is that here in the back, um, they sat about this long, about the length of my fingertip to my knuckle. And the end would actually obstruct from me being able to access the bolt that holds in my Jin's Chopper's sissy bar. And so I would have to loosen the turn signal and turn it downward to then be able to access this, which again, may not sound like too big of a deal, but the issue is because you can't access the nut on the back side of this frame it would make it so that the turn signal would no longer really sit super snug and would sit kind of loose and it made it so that the rear signals wouldn't 
always line up anymore. Um, and one would sit a little bit further down while one sat a little bit further up and it didn't look symmetrical. In any case, I thought it was time to change things up, which I did. And I went with these combustion industry turn signals. These are amazing. They're super small and they're super bright. Daytime or nighttime, you can see no issues. In the front, so that I didn't have to have a mounting hole for the turn signal, I went for the combustion industry claw turn signal, which essentially allows you to uh, clamp, obviously, the light onto your fork. It gives it a clean look. It's came out great. So this is what she looks like after the fresh installs. And I'll show you what she looks like lit up. Get this going. Boom, boom. Now I elected to go for uh, the turn only in the front. You can purchase running lights for combustion industries, but that would take a little bit more wiring I love the fact that I have the seven inch headlight and I didn't want to take away from that. The running lights in the front, it didn't really make sense to me to go through the extra hassle of wiring, the extra expense. So I just went with the turn signal only, but so you have an idea of what those look like. And let's take a look at the rear. There it is. They're plenty bright. I'm happy with the change and I don't imagine I'm gonna have the same issues with these LED lenses because they are recessed and sealed off and are not rounded in the front like the Astros I think these will last a lot longer without getting discolored without falling out so I'm super happy with this purchase and I'm really happy with this headlight and how it's all right everybody so that'll do it for this video if you have any questions hit me up in the comments I'll be happy to answer any of those the links to all the products that I installed and talked about in the video will be listed in the description. And until next time, stay on two wheels.